Uh, the book is not printed now in English. Um, what? Not yet. Okay, not yet printed in English. Um, but I have um, some stories. Um, in the book, um, very much stories. Of course, there are the keys, the rules, the steps. Um, it's seven steps. I don't tell you, otherwise you won't buy the book. Um, <laughs> no, I can tell you, of course. Um, but what I like most are the stories, and in this book are only stories from ourselves, what we experienced with successful wishing. In German, the book is called Successful Wishing, or Wishing Successful. So, um, if you have questions, I can answer them, otherwise I would like to read a story. Yeah? All right. Okay. Um, uh, the first story is uh, the impossible is carried out immediately. Um, and it's about the doubt. We always have doubts. And you know, as you know, doubt is the same as a wish, of course, because it has, it has emotion, it has pictures, we can visualize it, and we give so much power in the doubts. And we doubt always. So, and this is a story um, where I doubted at first too, because it was almost impossible that this could happen. So, uh, when we were working in Munich on the final cut of our film, and that's just the beginning, we felt so at home that we absolutely wanted to move back to Munich. The weather was beautiful, the people were friendly, and all our friends were there again. Munich was simply our home. But immediately thousands of limiting beliefs popped up arguing why this definitely couldn't work. Okay, here are the points. It's not that easy to return to our native town because our daughter Julia is attending an international school in Bonn. Second, it would be impossible to enroll her at school in Munich as all the English language schools are totally overcrowded. The waiting lists at these schools run to several years. Of course we could wish, but reality dictates that our wish would take some time to manifest. Of course we all know this it takes time. And there are only two days left before the summer holidays. The school offices are probably all empty by now. The class lists for the next school year have of course been drawn up long ago. There's no place not for us, for nobody anywhere in the whole world. This year is a no-go the next year either. At that point, we realized that we had fallen into our own trap of limiting beliefs. In other words, we were busy creating our own failure. We changed course immediately and started wishing the proper way. After all, successful wishing had already become more or less second nature to us. But the wish did not strike us as realistic. Why not? Our minds were at it again, having crept in through the back door with all their doubts. Why didn't we just go for it and let things take their course? And strangely enough, no sooner had we formulated a scent and sent the wish than I felt then I felt a persistent urge to phone one of the best international schools in Munich. Michaela smiles, of course, it was utter nonsense, set my mind. Of course the manifestation of this wish was a sheer impossibility. Of course there was no way this could work out. However, after sending out a wish, Michaela always listens very attentively to the subtler energies. Less than two minutes later, she had acted on my impulse and found the school management. The incredible miracle started to take shape. She was told that there was indeed still a place available in the second year group. Another pupil had just been withdrawn two minutes before the phone call, and we were invited to visit the next day, the last day of the school year. We were warned not to entertain too high hopes, though as a lengthy ad admission procedure was normally required. So the next day we found ourselves, to our amazement, in the headmistress's office. On the way there, we had encountered the parents of a child who, for whom there was no place. In tears, they told us that this meant they would be moving back to England. All in all, it was clear to us that not, notwithstanding the mistress's cordiality, our application would be rejected too. Like thousands of others, 
each year. Yet we had wished, and the wish had led us here, right into the office of the headmistress, why, by some miracle, still had one place to offer. The only place in the whole school. And, into the bargain, this place was in the second year group in which Julia belonged. The headmistress spoke at length to Julia and gave her several tests. They conversed in English, and then, after an hour, the miracle became reality. The headmistress nodded approvingly at us and entered Julia in the list of the new pupils. If ever anything had been truly impossible, it was this. Securing a place at this school within one day. For years afterwards, other parents confirmed to us the sheer incomprehensibility of this miracle. And in this book are several stories about um, things which happened to that. And I can tell you another story uh, of Julia. Um, I just tell it you because it's so amazing. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it shows you that I'm still very often full of doubt because we are full of doubt. Okay, uh, Julia uh, was in this school and um, of course this school was in English. So for her it was for sure, okay, I will study in the USA. Hmm, okay, in the USA, okay, it was a really unknown, not very famous school, and you, the USA will wait for you, okay. So what we have to do one year before she go to the USA, we have um, to make a tour, a university tour. So you visit all the great universities, uh, Julia decided to go, okay. Also Yale, Harvard, come on, uh, Stanford, yes, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, clear, Brown, come on, please, give me Columbia, and so on, all the Ivy Leagues. And uh, so we were there, it was fine, really, it's astonishing, uh, the universities were brilliant. And, um, but after a week, after all these universities, we always heard the same stories. Here we'll only study the best of the best from the whole world. Okay, Julia, you? Mm -hmm. Here we'll only study people who are really willing to get famous. So, and we have a long list of tests and so on. So, I remember the day at Brown. Brown is the third best university in USA. I got mad. I got angry. I said, come on, please, let us be realistic. What are we doing here? Come on, guys. This is Ivy League and we are from Munich. This is, I don't know, but so. And um, I said, Julia will never get a chance to get in a school like this. And Julia came to me face to face at Brown and said, oh, Papa, yes. Why don't you read your own books? <laughs> and by the way, I like the university. I like Brown. This is my university. Next year I'm going to this university. And I've had the thought, oh my God, what have, have I done? <laughs> oh my God, I wrote all these books and Julia is now somewhere uh, in heaven and she will never come back to earth. She will... <laughs> I don't know. So, um, I didn't say anything. Um, but a, ha a year later, when all the tests and all the admissions were sent away, there's one huge day when all the university at the same time publish uh, in the internet in, uh, where uh, which students they are taken. So um, it was 10 o'clock at night in Munich and the first university sent um, the lists out. So we saw um, Northeastern, wow, Boston, oh that's good. So finally she jumped away. We saw suddenly Tufts would take her. Tufts? Well that's a great university. And Julia said yeah that's good but uh, no that's not good enough. So. One o'clock in the night, we heard just only the printer. Bzz, 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 bzz. Julia came down the stairs with a piece of paper, and on it was brown. We congratulate you. You are invited to be the student. 
and I was just sitting there like right now I get all these goose bubbles. It's uh, goosebumps. 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 Yeah. So, and she was right. Everything is here. All the boundaries are here. We think it's impossible to go there. It's impossible. And like Henry Ford said, said you were, you are always right. If you think you can do it, you're right. If you think you can't do it, you're right too. And so I learned a lot that you're very often in doubt. Can you read another story you, how you found the house? Uh, and I was uh, in doubt. Yeah, finally, I have Michaela who kicked me in the ass. But uh, I was full of doubts too. Um, if, if you want to hear the next story. Well, okay. Um, wishing for the ideal house is a thing. Um, Okay, um, we were planning to move from Bonn to Munich, of course. Um, we had only a small office in Munich. Uh, Michaela, being of a very sunny disposition, you've seen her before, absolutely wanted to find a wonderful home near my office so, so that I wouldn't have to struggle through the, com through the traffic every day. Okay, in fact, she even went a step further. She was convinced that we would be able to rent a beautiful little house at most three minutes on foot from my office. I was also convinced at that, at that time. And so we submitted our wish. But no matter where, we inquired, we met with disbelieving headshakes. The real estate agents we had commissioned soon made it clear to us that we would certainly not find anything within a year, not in this area. They already had clients living in hotels simply because there was nothing being offered around here. There was no response to our classified ads in the newspaper. The more intensively we sought, the more impossible the fulfillment of our wish seemed to become. Four weeks before our planned move to Munich, the moving company started to get nervous. They wanted to know where they were supposed to take our furniture. So did I, actually. They had to arrange things like parking permits and claim parking space for the van, but our wished for house was still nowhere inside. Quite the contrary. It was clear to me that this wasn't going to work out. We had pushed our luck too far. And then the doubts started stirring inside me. More than once I considered renting storage space for our furniture. I was convinced that this time things would go wrong. But Michaela? remained unshakable in her faith. The house will come to us. We wished for it, so why should we have doubts? Of course, she was right, of course, but this time the situation was getting rather serious. What if the universe's notion of time differed from ours, or the universe had just received a vast number of wishes and was processing them in order of the date of received? Uh, was our account manager perhaps busy with entirely different things, more important things than our modest wish for a house in the near my office? And what were we to say to the moving people? We have just submitted a wish to the universe <laughs> for a new house, and the universe always delivers in due time. They wouldn't thought we had gone completely mad. To be honest, there were moments when I did indeed consider Michaela a bit, um, well, shall we say, stubborn. But our marriage was more important to me than the probability of ending up on the street without our furniture. Actually, the thought of sitting on the sofa between parked cars and drinking coffee was quite amusing. But what would we do if it started to rain? <laughs> Every day I became more nervous. Above all, because Michaela, in her boundless innate faith, had dismissed all the stage agents who did not share her belief in a successful outcome, which was all of them. Her attitude was, why should she surround herself with energies that counteracted her wish? So, shortly before we were due to move, we had no house and no one looking for a house on our behalf. Thank you for that. So far, I had been good at successful wishing, but now we had quite clearly come up against our limits. 
Not as far as Michaela was concerned, though. The deadline was drawing closer and closer. Eventually, Michaela would have to face the truth. And the ugly truth was so obvious. This time, the prompt delivery hadn't worked out. Our furniture would be dumped on the street. However, Michaela refused to face the truth. She saw no reason to doubt. On the contrary, she encouraged me not to give further room to my own doubts and to confidently hold to the, mean, to the manifestation of our wish. And then, the miracle actually happened. It began quite silent in a pharmacy. The pharmacist recognized us. Many years ago, she had sold us a, a, pregnant, a pregnancy test and two hours later, a second one, because the first one had produced a clear result and I had got on Michaela's nerve until she asked the pharmacist for advice. Was the color line on the test strip red or was it blue? She still remembered and this occasion very well. Well, we struck up a conversation and suddenly she told us that an old friend of hers was moving away and planning to rent his house. Well, here, just around the corner. Less than 10 minutes later, we phoned the owner of the house and set up an appointment to view it the next day. But of course, we couldn't wait any longer. That afternoon, we sneaked around the house and viewed it from the outside. We liked it. It was our house. It felt like our house. But the viewing appointment the next day was for all the other prospective tenants as well. Why should we be the ones who get this house? Perhaps because we wished for it and it's now being delivered, smiled Michaela, in her faith. And then the second miracle happened. As we were slowly walking away from the house, an old lady came along and tried to open the garden gate. But it stuck. Although we were a distance away, she called to us and asked us to help her. We opened not only the garden gate for her, but also the front door. And when we said that we would be coming to view the house the next day, she offered to show us around straight away. We thus got a private guided tour of our house. The house was precisely what we were looking for. We were thrilled in our minds. We already saw how we would allocate the rooms and which pieces of furniture we would put where. But we weren't there yet. The elderly lady didn't want to make a decision in advance, but there was a mutual sympathy between us and she wanted to phone to her son, who would take care of the arrangements. And we heard the phone, hello, yeah, yeah, a yeah, couple, and yeah, so beautiful, so nice, so simple. you have to give the house to them. Yeah, of course, I know more tomorrow, coming people, okay, but they will come first, tomorrow. Okay, so, the next day, we met the whole family before the other prospective tenants arrived. It was a wonderful afternoon and it was clear to everyone that we would get the house. Although others offered more money, presumably backed by an income more steady than ours, a short time later we held the tenancy agreement in our hands. A miracle? Coincidence? Or the delivery of our wish? And we can tell you many, many stories. Uh, we won a car, I needed money, we won a car, a Jaguar, so that I can, I can write the desire code. Julia, uh, Michaela won a car, so the fullest book of these stories and a funny thing happened because, you know, the book is 10 years now, the first time it was released, and a funny thing happened. I read this right now, of course, again. And I was in the same mood as I was there. And I felt suddenly empowered again. Well, why working so hard? Why not wish? <laughs>